Patrick Crouch, who I fell into conversation with, and he told me he had a map of Sturmer Mere from the 1500s. And he offered to let me have a copy. And uh, he just dropped it round to my house one day. And I was amazed that this, there was an Elizabethan map. Uh, I started to try to do a transcript. I had a magnifying glass and started to write out what it said. And it was obviously um, giving the ownerships of various pieces of land in the mere. I had a little Elizabethan man in a boat on the middle and funny little ducks and fish. And uh, as it happened, it was that day in January where it really snowed badly and Sheila came round and also Barbara turned up with the snow falling outside and so I showed them this map, so they studied it as well and looked into it a bit further and found out that I could get a copy from the National Archives and it was relating to um, a legal case where there'd been a dispute over who owned what land and it's relating to the Duchy of Lancaster which I'm not quite sure but I think that's always been very close to the royal family, the Duchy of Lancaster and they've had land holdings all over the country. So we then used that map, didn't we, sometimes in our history group meetings and we found that various other people had a copy. Arthur, who has yeah. the sheepdogs, he gave you a copy. Yeah. I got a copy from the National Archives. I think Roger had a copy. Yeah. And at one time we did want to try and get that map onto one of our boards yeah. as a background, yeah. but it didn't prove possible. Um, but that was really the first ancient artifact relating to Sturmer that I came across. Yeah. Sturmer was named after the Mere, the village on the marsh. And because the mere was far more extensive in Elizabethan times, a lot of it now has been ploughed into fields. But it was a, must have been the most important source of fish for food. And we do know that it's probably got some significance with Stoke College, college being ecclesiastical and not scholastical as it is now, and possibly with the monks from the Priory at Clare. But... As I say, the mere has shrunk considerably. It's there, it's there in the winter more than it is in the summer. They'd actually take, take a cut of hay off of the uh, grassland around it this year, probably for cattle. The mere now, if you go over there very quietly, is an absolute wonderful source of particularly wildfowl. We get lots of uh, ducks and geese. The geese fly in every morning, we particularly this, this time of the year. The swans down there, the teal we see, obviously mallards. Sometimes on a May morning early there's quite a noise going on down there. Lots of herons, so there's obviously fish still over there. When it is flooded it's really quite extensive. If you get on the top of the hill and look down you realise what a large area it was. And you can still see even from the old Elizabethan map, some of the the banks and boundaries that are in that map are still there. You can still identify them. Because the funny thing about that map is is that it's upside down. It's yeah, our way of yeah. thinking, isn't it? It goes round the wrong way because it looks like water hauls in the wrong place. But it's, you turn it upside down, it all makes sense. It's an easy place to get to, not too far. But the mere? Yes, yeah. not too long a walk. I like going along the bank towards Keddington yeah, it's and just it's looking down and seeing the swans. Mm -hmm. And I love, what I love is the pussy willows in the springtime. Mm. There's a lov some lovely, lovely willow trees up there with the catkins mm. on. Mm. And the hazel catkins. It's, it is, you should say, it's a lovely part of and Nobody seems to know about it apart no, from No, you never you. see anybody else walking up there. Not very often, no. No, no, it's true. You see me first thing in the morning. I think you, I think you get the regular dog walkers. Yeah. But And, and very often, not so much now, because we put a board at the end of the, of the lane going down towards the brook, but we used to get a lot of people doing the Star Valley Path. Yeah. And it didn't identify the Stour Brook and they thought that was Stour, the River Stour, 
mm. and they'd stand outside the cottage here thinking I'm not quite sure where I yeah. am and uh, so we, you know they'd get up to the main road and you think we'll see you back again in about seven minutes yeah. and you realise you've gone yeah. wrong but yes it is lovely up there I don't know how many people actually walk the Stour Valley Path I think it's quite nice to have that circular walk up past the mere and back towards Calford Green. Yes, yes. that's not too far. No. That's quite a manageable walk. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I think that's a really accessible walk, and it's unusual. It's an unusual landscape, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it is. It's great to go right up to the top of the hill behind Water Hall and look down mm. on it, which I'll do with you in mm. a little while. Yeah, um, when we do the WI walks. Um, yeah, it is, and it is, and it's a great. You can get great sunrises over it, mm. get some really good colours and the grasses I find are fascinating. Mm. The different reeds they grow so tall and they make a whispering noise mm. when you go mm. past them. out sometimes I mean it's just dried out from almost for an, almost a year I mean that was flooded last May and it's just this last two weeks started to dry out I wouldn't say it's, it's not dry in the middle the swans are still there yeah the swans are still in the middle there but no big fish to eat could be I don't know <laughs> I'm not a fisherman <laughs>